to lift the sector. But our next guest says not to lose sight of the smaller players helping keep the tech rally afloat. Joining us now, Eric Jackson, EMJ Capital founder and president. Good to see you, Eric. So I want to get your take on this rally here because you say we could be at the beginning of a 10 month rally, which is going to benefit tech the most like it did in 1981. So we'll get to your longer term picks, but at least for the next quarter, then which stocks are really going to see the biggest rallies then? Well, I, I think that um, the concentration risk that Jared was just speaking about, um, I, it gets a disproportionate share of, 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 of interest. The, the, I think the, the reality is these, these huge companies like Apple, Meta, uh, and all the rest are just, um, they are producing gobs of cash, gobs of profit. Uh, they are enormous relative to typical stocks. And so therefore their weight on the composite in, indices uh, is enormous. And uh, I think sometimes they can overshadow what's going on in the, in the kind of mid-sized stocks and, and smaller stocks. So, and there's a big difference, I would say, between them today and Ma Bell in the early 80s or whatever uh, Jared was referring to. Um, th these are, th these companies, the fangs are gonna continue to be successful for a while. But, uh, you know, the, the mid caps and the small caps have had a, a, a successful uh, Q1. I mean, names like, in, in tech specifically, names like Coinbase, uh, Tesla, I don't know if that's considered a mid cap or a large cap now. Um, Shopify, uh, the, a, a lot of these names have had phenomenal bounce back uh, Q1s after a you know really disappointing uh, 2022. And and so even though uh, Fangs did really well, I think you want to be thinking about um, you know what happens if this rally broadens out and and starts to extend into 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 you know, other sectors and, and, and smaller cap stocks. And I think you want to be looking for names of, of companies that really haven't participated as much yet, but still have a strong underlying story. Uh, and that's where I'm spending a lot of my time and trying to focus on, um, because I think there's, there's further upside in those kinds of names. And you mentioned a couple of your picks here. Um, you mentioned Tesla, you mentioned Coinbase as well. I want to talk about Freya Battery, the, the battery maker there. Obviously, this stock has been under a lot of pressure year to date. But what do you like in it long term? I know you're also looking at the Inflation Reduction Act and really the opportunities there. Well, right. I mean, obviously, the, the IRA put a huge emphasis on uh, the need to build out electric batteries and the whole electrification theme. Uh, which is, stretches down to even kind of the, the pulling the resource minerals out of the ground in order to uh, to meet the the demand that we're going to see over the coming years. Uh, since since the IRA though was passed, a lot of other countries around the world have have tried to you know come up with their versions of the IRA. So um, a week and a half ago, Canada came out with its sort of answer, which also placed an interest on electric. Europe is going to, to follow uh, soon, and they've already indicated that. And so the reality is that um, when you look around today and you say, well, uh, I think electrification is going to be important. Uh, all these car companies that are you know, moving full steam ahead into this area, they, they will need batteries, which are the most costly components today to build these kinds of cars. Uh, and it's not just a car story, electrification. Keep in mind, like, we're also going to want it for our businesses, our homes. We need, you know, we need to store energy and so forth. Uh, if we have solar panels on our roofs and all this kind of stuff, so who's going to who who are going to build those those batteries? And today, the biggest players are Chinese uh, and Japanese. And so, um, you know, if, if you can, if you believe that uh, there's going to continue to be tensions with China, uh, obviously, uh, you would want to see some Western-based players. Uh, producing batteries, and there just aren't a lot today uh, that are out there. Uh, and so Freyer is one of the, you know, pure play Western-based uh, electric battery makers that is still a, you know, a DSPAC uh, pre-revenue company. And so uh, it, it's still very, very small cap. And yet it's got a lot of uh, momentum behind it. Uh, they are built in the midst of building a huge gigafactory in Norway. They're also, uh, they've sped up uh, their plans to build the Gigafactory in Georgia uh, because of the IRA. Uh, and that might actually um, be live before the Norwegian Gigafactory is. So this is a company yeah. that, uh, even though it's early stage, ha has a lot of momentum behind it. It has a real management team. It has real uh, uh, indications of interest in terms of big players, lining, giving them kind of offtake agreements. Uh, they have the financing. There's rumors out there in the market that they're going to 
continue to land further financing from a big uh, private equity player, for example. So th this is the kind of name where it's it's it bounces around a lot. It's a small cap. And so uh, the volume is not huge, but it, and it's only around a billion dollars market cap today. And yet, um, you know, if if things continue to go well, uh, if they continue right. to prove out the, the building of the batteries, uh, it's the kind of name that could rocket ahead uh, in, in over the next year. They have a they have a competitor in and Sweden that's only about two years ahead of them, uh, but they're planning North Northvolt that's planning to IPO later in the second half of this year, and they they've said publicly that they Eric, want a twenty billion dollar valuation. Eric, I do want to make sure we get to some of your other picks as well. You have some interesting ones here: Rent the Runway, Bombardier, the private jet maker, and also Coinbase. Um, of those three, which ones do you see the biggest upside for? A lot of people are expecting Coinbase to really grab market share after F FTX fell out, but that doesn't seem to be the case at the moment. Uh, I, I think uh, you know we will see that it is the case that they are gaining market share, and now with the latest headlines about Binance from last week, I think that's a signal that they're you know another signal that they're going to continue to gain market share. Uh, if you bet on coin, you know Coinbase being kind of the last regulated uh, entity standing, notwithstanding their uh, their current battle with the SEC. Um, then, uh, and if you think that uh, the, the bounce that we've seen in crypto in Q1, where all, all of crypto's market cap is up 45% on the year, is going to is going to continue, uh, then then they are a natural beneficiary of that. Um, you know, when when trading volumes are dropping, they they are losing money and their stocks going down. But if if market cap for crypto is increasing uh, and retail investors are attracted back into the scene, that they're going to benefit. So. Uh, I think that they, uh, it's a very volatile stock, but they're already up, you know, 60%, I think, on the year uh, or more. And they have a lot of further upside ahead if the, the run in, in crypto coins continues. Of the other names, um, I think Bombardier, it's a, it's a value stock. It sort of gets forgotten about. It's a smaller cap stock, but they're uh, one of the dominant luxury jet makers out there. Uh, it can, despite the lo looming recession, uh, there's a huge backlog of people that want to get uh, private jets. And they Bombardier happens to sell the longest range, most luxurious, arguably, uh, private jet out there uh, with like a $75 million price ticket attached to it. So uh, they are continuing to pay down debt. Uh, and that that value is going straight into the value of the equity. So I like them. We'll certainly be keeping an eye on them and we'll follow back up with you, see how they do over the course of the next 10 months. Eric Jackson, their EMJ Capital founder and president, thank you for your time this morning.